All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am joined by Donna Weber, the president of Springboard Solutions, who is up in Palo Alto in Northern California. How are you doing, Donna? Good afternoon, doing great. It's a beautiful day. Yeah, and I'm as usual in San Diego, and it's a beautiful day here too. Uh, some people have heard me complaining on this about rain in the last few weeks, but the rain looks like it's gone. And yeah, good thing about San Diego, it's probably gone for about nine or 10 months now, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is always nice. Okay, so what we're going to talk about today is the customer success bow tie. So Donna, let's get straight into it uh, and, and build up to explaining what you mean by a customer success bow tie. Sure. So uh, thanks for including me on your, um, yeah, your valuable podcast, John. Um, so uh, can you see my screen where it says, what yes. if your current customers are your only customers this year? So I want to talk about yeah. that. That's kind of the, the thesis question. And then uh, let's look at, um, at uh, uh, my approach. So I have this customer success bow tie, and I specialize in helping customers onboard and engage their customers so that they get maximum value out of your product and then mm -hmm. they keep renewing and paying you. So that's the goal. So on the left is the buyer journey, on the right is the customer journey. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, the buyer journey, you know, it's probably pretty familiar to you. You start mm -hmm. with, you know, many prospects, you, you know, attract, you nurture, you get some leads, and then you close some customers. And this is the, the, the familiar sales funnel. And the buyer yep. journey has been become much more sophisticated, mm -hmm. data-driven, and automated over the last 10 years. And there, you know, there's data di driven insights, there's digital content, and you know, there's a lot of sophistication here. Any yep. questions? No, 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 it's just saying it's interesting just that the, the, the bow tie, because I would say that most people, if they were to visualize something like this, they would say, okay, you've got the buyer journey. And then by the time they get to a customer, they, I think a lot of people see that as a kind of very linear, hmm. you know, journey after that not as you have done it where things actually grow and grow yeah so that's what i want to emphasize you know oftentimes you ring the bell woohoo we close the deal yeah. but really that's just the beginning and especially with the cost of acquiring customers mm. if your customers don't renew in that first year then you are actually losing money so as excited yeah. as you get about a new logo if you don't engage them and drive them to value you are losing money and that's an interesting dynamic isn't it because that is true it's like uh if you have two people say come in, come onto the sales floor and one just says, I just won ABC company, I've never done business, everybody's great that. And somebody else goes, I just renewed DEF company. Everyone's like, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah so really uh, yeah, that's a good... so, so it's weird the way we, we look on these things differently, even though as we know, it's harder to acquire new people. Yeah, and it's cost like yeah, and it's costly. I've heard and... six times, 10 times mm -hmm. more to acquire a customer than to retain a customer. Yeah. Um, and it's it somehow retaining is just not as sexy. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you know, everyone wants to cheer with the new logo. And of course, if you're a startup, you gotta, sure, sure. you know, start with some customers. But um, also, you know, even startups are seeing 50, even up to 80% of their revenue is coming from the install base of customers. Mm -hmm. So we really can't forget about them. Um, let me talk through the, uh, the customer journey. So, yeah. you know, you have your customers, you close the deal, you'll notice there's a gap there. Mm -hmm. And that's because a lot of companies think, okay, you know, maybe from the days of the uh, perpetual license model, like we're done, you know, wipe the hands clean onto yeah. the next deal. You know, I need to keep hunting. And they hope that customers figure out their product. They mm -hmm. hope that they use it. They hope that they renew. They're not really engaging them or they might engage them 30, 60, 90 days before the renewal when yeah. it's too late, you know, and then you might have to parachute in uh, a team of firefighters to save the deal. Yeah. And then you're going to exactly. be spending two, three times more to save it. So with the uh, bow tie, if you onboard customers in a proactive and prescriptive way, leading them to adoption, then, you know, expansion, they're, they're, they're getting, they're getting great successes with your product. They're more likely to expand to new users, new organizations, and they're more likely to be your champions. So they're going to buy more. They're going to keep renewing. They're going to tell their friends and colleagues. And you get that expansion through guiding customers. It, 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 but it must be proactive and prescriptive. Yeah. You can't just kind of go, yeah, you know, go figure it out. 
So here's another thing, Jim, just um, when we just talk about the close to onboarding, I think here, here's where there is often a, 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 a big issue that there is a very inelegant handoff uh, and you know the sales and often as, as buyers right the salesperson who's been your best friend throughout this process who's been who's been replying to you on a Sunday afternoon who can't wait to service you suddenly here sort of goes hi let me introduce you to our customer success or our account manager thanks everything see you later and they're gone right and it's and it's you know there's a psychological issue there of, of where buyers suddenly feel like they've been cut loose, even if they're mm -hmm. handed off to a very competent person. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I've read it, written about this. I can send you some links about mm -hmm. the neuroscience of onboarding because there's the whole buyer's remorse, first mm -hmm. impressions, um, prospection that goes on in the, in the people's, you know, there, there are actual people in the accounts that you're selling to and they have um, reactions that need to be addressed. And in addition, I built out this orchestrated onboarding framework to mm -hmm. deal with that because onboarding is not one person's job. Customer yeah. success is not one person's job. It's really about breaking down the silos and having teams work together to provide a seamless journey for customers. In this embark phase, that actually happens before the deal closes. So that would um, be, you know, probably start in this last section of the sales mm -hmm. cycle where you start introducing the folks who are going to be the customer facing teams, maybe the customer success manager, even before the deal close closes, helping uh, the customer understand what's going to be coming next, uh, you know, how they're going to be successful. And then there's the handoff and I include mm -hmm. an internal handoff from the sales right. team to the CSM and then an external handoff, and that includes the mm. customer teams. And that's especially important in a, um, in a large company where maybe you know, yeah. somebody in procurement bought the, bought the software, they've been having this great relationship with the sales person. And then the internal teams are told, hey, implement this and use it. And they have no idea what yeah, it is, yeah. why it was bought, what the objectives are, what the outcomes yeah. are. So well, I like, um, I, like really this. I like I like that where it's number two, you know, where the handoff isn't the first thing that happens, it's the second that oh thank you. And then there's a kickoff, and oftentimes mm -hmm. folks kind of you know throw all this together, this like kickoff, handoff, and then and this implementation, it's all together. So I break those down. So you you start building relationships, and then the kickoff is about the implementation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um you, you really get the implementation and adoption. You review how it's been going, and then there's that expand. So that goes back to the bow tie, where you keep looking at how we can drive customers to more value in the product, keep onboarding new users, new organizations, and get them to more complex use case scenarios. So they're they're really transforming mm -hmm. their business because of your products. Right, and then obviously when you move into the adoption phase, I mean this is the, this is really. Uh, especially if you're in technology or um, this is a really critical phase here because this is where a lot of things fall down and it's very easy for the new buyer or the organization to turn on you a little bit if there's problems in the adoption phase. Yeah and you know it really depends on how long it might be so mm -hmm. I talk about it in business to business world you have 90 days to, to turn a new customer into a loyal one Mm -hmm. But if you have a mobile app, it might be 90 seconds that you right. implement it and start adopting. And if it's business to consumer, you might have 90 minutes. So mm -hmm. really knowing like what's needed. And then I talk with companies about creating first value and quick wins because right. that adopt could be, you know, 30 days, 90 days. It could be 120 days. I mean, I've, I've worked at, with companies where it's 6, 12, even 18 months. So unless you're providing some clear value along that adoption and implementation, mm -hmm. then they're like, they're just tired, you know? It's just, yeah. it's just a bunch of technical wheeze and headaches and integrations that aren't working. Um, so providing some ways to get value so that the customer's going, oh, I'm glad we bought your product rather than just mm -hmm. being in a waiting game. Yeah, absolutely. And I think part of the problem is often, uh, if you're good at, at working and advising customers, you get them to do kind of phased implementations mm -hmm. as opposed to boiling the ocean and everybody getting yeah. confused. Yeah, I, um, I like to say pick a small beach to land yeah. on <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> rather than trying to boil the ocean. And then yeah, yeah. I did I did write some articles on first value as well about how to do that. So I'm happy to share. 
great, um, great. Those and then, and then you move into the review phase. Yeah. So find out, Hey, how's it going? You know, mm -hmm. um, find out how, how the customers are doing, how the, you know, so finding out uh, the value of the onboarding program and also the relationships and how they're doing with the product. It's good to get that temperature check. Don't wait till mm -hmm. they've been using it for a year. Find out uh, quickly. So, you know, some of the health of the, of the, of the programs you're offering and the health of, of the cu customer. And, you know, you're taking the temperature the first 90 days rather than waiting to the last 90 days. Mm -hmm. And then you have a piece, obviously, the six is the expand. And again, I think this is somewhere something that a lot of people kind of fall down on because they're kind of so relieved to get the customer up and running and everything implemented and it all seems to be fine. So sometimes they adopt, you can find that sometimes they're like, it ain't broke right now. Let's not mess with it in any way. Let's just, they're not, they're not calling us. They seem to be happy. So let's not mess with this. Well, that's not a way to, you know, mm -hmm. have a relationship. <laughs> and um, I, I gave a webinar, I presented a webinar last week with, um, with uh, about the ongoing onboarding journey. And let mm -hmm. me just share a slide around that. So, um, so ongoing onboarding, there might be new users in the existing mm -hmm. accounts just because yeah. you did that adoption. With the first set of users, if there's turnover at the company, if there's new user groups, um, new organizations, they need to be onboarded. So mm -hmm. that they can be successful with the product most likely your product is updating pretty regularly and even during these times products are updating mm -hmm. so um are you onboarding users to the new product features to new products you know they need to know what it is what's in it for me how to use them how it integrates with what else you have um are there new organizations so do they might be completely mm -hmm. new implement implementations where you're starting at the embark stage or they might be really your onboarding a new set of users and then phases of maturity. And, and we touched on that a little bit. I call uh, mm -hmm. can dive into there is, you know, have you defined a customer maturity life cycle? For example, you know, I know how to use Excel in a pretty basic sure. way. It meets my needs, but mm -hmm. if you're a whiz in Excel and you can start showing me all these, you know, um, pivot tables and formulas and conditional formatting, suddenly like my whole world is transformed. And that's just with yeah. a simple tool that we all use every day. So it, there's huge opportunities to guide users along more sophisticated use cases of your products. Yeah, and, and I think that there again, I think that's, a, that's an area that's, uh, that's overlooked a lot too, is, is that value, because let's face it, I mean, a lot of, lot of customer success or account management, it, it tends to be, uh, hey Donna, just checking in, is everything going okay? Checking in. And yeah, and you go, yeah, it's fine. And they go, okay, great. So customers happy on we go instead of yeah. like trying to bring in you some value or saying, Oh, would you like to have a, would you like it to have a quarterly business review? And you say, well, not really, because I haven't given you a good enough reason to have that. Yeah. You know, I was doing some research on maturity models and it was all from the company's perspective. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. We're going to engage them and then we're going to drive them to renewal. It's not about the customers and like what they need to do in your products and how you're going to guide them along to getting more and more value. They need to continually be getting value. And that's the company's job now. Um, mm -hmm. There's a great um, article from McKinsey called From Touchpoints to Journeys. And, um, they, you know, it shows that even though, yeah, the onboarding might have been great, support might be great, the implementation might be great, but it's really the job of the companies now to provide that seamless ongoing journey for the customers yeah because i would say to people i was uh, i was using an example of um i was i was actually i was over in ireland back in november and i'm coming back right and uh myself and my son and so we get to the airport everything smooth check in really smooth get through because um, i actually have u.s immigration in dublin which is nice so let's get through that everything is really smooth flights on time smooth flight you know gets in a couple of minutes early everything goes fine and then there's an hour delay getting the luggage off, which happens, but nobody said anything. Nobody came down to uh, inform. Nobody. Uh, so all of that great experience was wiped uh, away. And then later on, when somebody says, how was your, how was your journey back? You go, oh, it's terrible. Even though actually 95% of it was great. Yeah. You, you, the one piece knocks it down. And I think this is a piece that people miss about customer experience and customer journey. I agree. And um, Ed Powers, who shared with me about, neuroscience of mm -hmm. onboarding. He also shared that, you know, it's not that stuff happens. I mean, stuff happens, yes. 
but it's how you deal with it and how you communicate. Mm -hmm. And those who communicate and those who deal with the crisis, they, they you know, like they're, we're dealing with people. So yeah. help them understand, communicate clearly. And, you know, that, that, that goes a long way. Yeah. So when everybody's standing around the luggage carousel and they're all looking at each other and saying, do you know what's happening? No. Do you know what's happening? Right. No. That's not a good customer experience. No, that's not a good customer experience. <laughs> all right. Well, this is great. Um, what is the last couple of pieces of advice you'd like to give people about, you know, how to maybe start the process of looking at their customer experience and the, the customer part of the journey? Well, I'm going to say it. Um, I'm going to say it um, three times because I believe okay. it's that important. Listen to your customers, listen to your customers, listen to your customers. People ask me like, well, what, how do I do that? Call them mm -hmm. up. You know, when I work with companies, that's the first thing I do is I listen to their customers because they have the answers. You know, they're smart people, mm -hmm. just like you're a smart person and the airline could learn from you. So, um, and so you listen to customers and, and it's not what you think they need. It's what they tell you that they need. So a lot of teams I see are get busy building out all these programs and they throw them out there and they stick or they don't stick, but they uh, spend a lot of time and effort without really knowing if it's meeting the user's requirements. So the first phase of design thinking principles is empathy, which means listening. Mm -hmm. And it's not calling to talk. It's calling to listen, asking some mm -hmm. really key questions and then taking action on the feedback that you receive. It's not about another survey. It's about yeah, listening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I know I'm glad you said that because I think again, people go, oh, let's send out a survey to our customers and think how many times do you fill out a survey that's sent yeah, to and, you? And, and, you and, know, and do if, you do it willingly? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also if, if you're not taking action on the feedback the customers provide, then yeah. don't, don't do it. If you're yeah. just gonna get a bunch of information and not actually move forward with an execution plan, then don't even ask, don't even, Get feedback. Excellent. Listen, Donna, this has been great. So all Donna's information and links will be in her contributor bio, but please do tell everybody a little bit more about yourself. And I see you've got all your contact info here, which is great. Sure. Well, yes, I've been running Springboard Solutions for um, four years now. And um, prior to that, I was in customer facing roles like customer enablement and customer success. And I help, um, here, I got a couple slides here. I help high growth Tech companies create customers for life with scalable customer onboarding and enablement programs. Um, I can help build uh, journey maps and, uh, and uh, customer maturity models. And uh, I usually like to start with some assessment so I really get a feel for what the current state is and then you know, move forward in an agile and iterative approach. Perfect, listen, this is great. And I encourage people to check it out because I do think the, the customer journey as in you know once they bought i think that's a, a, an area that isn't paid enough attention to and i think it's becoming a more and more critical area and as you said today given the circumstances we're in hanging on to your current customers may yeah. be the difference between surviving and not surviving so exactly. probably a good time to look at it <laughs> I, know, I hope <laughs> i hope it means that people finally start paying attention to this because i'm yeah. very passionate about it Absolutely. I love the shows and it's great. So listen, thanks very much, Donna. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline or CRM, see you off for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Oh, thank you.